Cool. All right, guys. Uh, hey, I'm Ben Schrader from AMI University here with uh, Rich Guido from Flux Burgers. Flux Burgers. Yes. And uh, Rich came over to visit us in the Factory X uh, racing pits today. We're in Las Vegas, and uh, we're kind of kind of winding down for the day, putting our stuff away. And so we started talking about transmissions and clutches, and you know, you guys wanted to see what we were running, so I thought we'd get one out, and share it with you and all the guys on Clutch Burgers and anybody else that wants to know. So start off and tell me what would you like to know, and then we'll we'll walk our way through it. Well, why don't we go over the basics first from the bottom up? So it's an aluminum flywheel. Yep. So aluminum flywheel with um, obviously steel inserts for heat sinks. Right. And then uh, it's a dual eight inch. Yes. Two eight inch center this one floater. And then uh, a six finger, basically that'd be our pressure plate, yeah. right? Six fingers. So for those of you guys that aren't familiar with it, so we can run a maximum diameter of an eight inch clutch. Um, so we can use whatever disc we want. You can have a single, a double, a triple. For our setup, we like the double. There's some other guys running triples. So you would just have an extra floater mm. with another disc in there. But, but we like this setup. Um, kind of gives us a nice height. Our clutch can doesn't get really long, you know, so. That, that works for us, and we use the center iron 5191 discs in it. But basically, um, yeah, so you've got you've got your pressure plate that's that's pushing down. So we got springs right here, and you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them that go around. And those are what we call the base adjustment. So that's like our base plate load, uh, no matter what we do. And then you can see there's levers or counterweights, so your, your throwout bearing would be pushing on these guys. And to release the clutch, you know, and that, that would suck this plate up against and compress our base rings there. And it's all mechanical. That's right. In yeah. your car. Fully mechanical. Yeah. Um, and the reason it's fully mechanical is because in these classes at the pro levels that are really um, dependent on a good reaction time, we want to be able to make it's it critical. exactly the same every single time. So you so, gotta make sure that the throw bearing is exactly the same distance. Correct. And for example, when you push the clutch all the way down, we keep the exact same amount of air gap between the discs and the plates the same every time. Yeah. Uh, and, and we do that by changing the height of the stand. So you see these adjustable stands here, they got numbers in them. So let's see, this one here we can probably actually spin a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So I can turn that because this stand is threaded, okay? So what that's doing is it's allowing us to set the total distance of the clutch the exact same height every time. So when we go and make a run, and it burns a little bit of our clutch disc off, obviously that thing's gonna wanna sit down farther. So when you push your clutch pedal all the way in, it wouldn't have the same amount of distance there to get me to let off the same way. Yeah, and that consistency of the, of the clearance is critical. Super so critical. And, and for those, those watching for a street type clutch, this is usually done by shims. That's so right. You, you have to take everything apart, but you can actually adjust this in the car without pulling the hat off. Correct. Doing all that. No. So you take your little Allen wrench that you would normally use to adjust these screws and you just stick it in there and you can lever that thing around. And so we count the number of turns or the number of pulls because you usually don't have to go a whole turn. Right. You know? um, and then you measure every one all correct. the way around. Yep, so we call that our ring height. So, yeah. so what would happen is if you kind of look in here, um, Matt, you can see that spring. So if I made my clutch disc shorter, every single time we run the car, we take the whole entire clutch apart, we put the clutch on a clutch disc cutting machine and we shave off a little to make sure they're flat and straight. So when I put it all together, now my spring's gonna be stretched out and I'm gonna have less total load because that spring rate is linear. So now that it's stood up, it's not gonna have as much force, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these stands down to bring this thing back down to the same height. Well, how do we know it's the same height? There are holes in here and we have a little dial indicator that is zeroed at what we call our specific ring height. So for example, we have our setup at 910 thousandths. Yeah. So you just set it at 910 and that's our zero. So when you go to put the clutch back in the car, you lightly screw these down so that everything, all the slack's taken up, slide your indicator in here in each one of these six holes and you make sure that you adjust these so you get 910 all the way around and then go ahead and torque your, your nuts down. And the, for, for those with street clutches like mine, you measure all the shims, put the shims in, and there's one spot that you just measure it. Right. You don't, typically we don't... Uh, you don't go all the way around like that. Go, go all the way around, because we have no adjustment. It's just, well, the adjustment is the shim. Is the shim. So, um, and that's okay. It's just a real time-consuming way to, yeah. to, to do the clutch. So having that threaded stand is really helpful. 
Now, go ahead. You said uh, it was an eight inch minimum or maximum? Uh, minimum, sorry. I think I said maximum, but we can't run smaller than eight inches. Right. Yeah, sorry. Because that's another tuning tool if you For can sure. use it. Yeah. To use two seven inch or an eight inch and a seven inch. Or three six and a quarters or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So total surface area there. So, um, but yeah, at this power level, you kind of need a fair amount of surface surface area there. So like I said, there's a couple guys running triple eights. And, uh, you know, to me, that's just more work for our car. We'd have to cut three discs instead of two. And it's expensive. It's, it's more expense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And consistency so, of the discs at the sure. time. Yep. So more and more things for us to worry about. So we try to control that. I love and then you and I were talking about counterweight earlier yep. and about lever design. Yep. So hang out there for two seconds. So you can see that this, uh, when Ben gets the, the other lever, it's going to be different. This one, this one's got quite an edge on it. So what let's do is let's kind of, so here's a hat that we normally have. So you're pushing your throw up bearing here to, to take all the load off the clutch so that, so that you can spin the engine up. When you take your foot off the clutch and the throw up bearing moves, now what happens is that full, you know, spring pressure from the bases are, are pushing down on my plates. And the more RPM I get, the more these fingers want to rotate out from that centrifugal force, right? Yeah. And so it's basically trying to pick this plate up. You can see when I pull up on these, it's trying to pick that plate up. Well, when they're locked down from the stand, it can't pick the plate up. So all it can do is push it down and give us more force. So more RPM gives us more force. And we change how much force we get by how much weight we hang on these, on these arms. So we call this counterweight. You can see these nuts and bolts here. That's counterweight. So we go around and put more on there or less on there. And for any given RPM, we'll have more load. However, what's just as critical is the shape of the arm that you use, the height of the arm, how far it is front and back. It's kind of like a rocker arm. Yeah, and you can really see, like you can see this high peak here and then no peak at all. So not only is there less metal, it's also in a different spot. In a different spot. Right. So what that means is you really have to go in there and look at what the clutch is doing when. So it's a it's a challenge. It's a really cool tuning challenge for the guy that, that's got to make the call. And you can either be the hero or you can be the zero, you know. So you hang a little too much weight on there and it'll blow the tires off. If you don't put enough on there, it'll shake the tires. And, you know, you just, and for those who don't understand, like when we're talking about hanging weight, yep. it's literally these these bolts. Like that one was really short with nothing sticking out. These These are long bolts. The washers are critical. They're like half a gram. So that's the tuning tool. And you'll you'll see that even on this clutch, like some have uh, two washers and a nut and some have one washer and none. It'll be consistent with its with yep. its match. And but we, we also have aluminum bolts and aluminum nuts and aluminum washers. So you can change from aluminum to steel and you can just really dial in what you want from weight there. Yeah, and so my clutch is exactly the same as that. Except for levers are totally different. The other critical thing with our street clutches is sometimes these levers are not that tight. And so if there's play in these levers, you literally have to pick it up, measure the clearance between the throw bearing, and make sure that the throw bearing isn't kind of in contact. It's part of the reason we don't run hydraulic sure. throw bearings with this. Well, lots of people do, but it's hard to gain, make sure that when this is fully compressed, with the hydraulic that you still have that clearance that you need. That's right. Because it's resting against the fingers all the time. Absolutely, yeah. And it's another variable. That so that's one of the things on this, when the clutch is fully out, we try to make sure it's not resting on the fingers. Yeah, we, like, we want some probably 200 thousandths or maybe a quarter inch there of clearance. That, that's about what I set mine to as well. Yep, so. Well, anyway, that's how the clutch works on a factory X car. I'm sure it works that's, very much the same as yours. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, this is a beautiful clutch. That's a nice piece, yeah. It's a very nice piece, yeah. Uh, how do you think it would be with like 7,500 miles? Uh, I think I'm gonna try to find out. I'm half tempted to put one in my little <laughs> Dragon Drive car. And maybe yeah. I'll take a spare like McLeod single disc or something in case it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys see me on the side of the road with the car jacked up, you'll know, you'll know what I'm working on. It would be really interesting to measure the, the total height and see what, how big of a can you'll need. Yeah, so, fit, so like typically if you have a triple, you'll have an 8 and 5 eighths can. With a double, depending on how far the can comes out before it rolls over, you might be able to get away with a 7 and a half or 7 three quarters. But really, the input shaft is going to determine that, how far you got to clear that. And then can you fit your throw bearing and your stack up in there? 
it's a it's just got to take the measurements to know for sure. Yeah. So typically, when you when you're done in the pits and you're heading up the run, you're not going to make any more adjustments. You don't make any adjustments in staging typically. So, like on a pro stock car, they will right in yeah. the staging yeah. lanes. Yeah. Um, it's just easier for us because we have power management that those guys don't, right? So for the pro stock car, you pretty much got like starting line RPM and that's it, right? So it's naturally aspirated, that's all the power you're gonna have. With a supercharged car like these, if I raise or lower the RPM, I'm also raising or lowering the boost and I can also play with the ignition time. So um, you could hook up your laptop, you could have a handheld. In our case, I put knobs on the car that we can turn. And so you just have to be cognizant of the fact that it's a series of dependent events. If I change the engine's power level, it's gonna change the way that clutch behaves. So we've got a window that we know we can sort of get away with. And then you go, well, if you go past that, you really need a clutch change. So we try to stay within that box. Yeah, and 100 RPM, it's a big deal. Launch also affects the counterweights. Correct. It changes how much pressure you're gonna be. That's right. So. Um, I, I run like a spreadsheet and I go, for a given amount of counterweight at a certain RPM, I'm going to have a total amount of clamping load that comes from the combination of my base springs plus the amount of plate load I would get from the counterweight at that RPM. And then I break those out into percentages. I might say, for example, I might have 800 pounds of load. And at the starting line, uh, you know, 64% of that might be base and only 36% of that is counterweight. Then I'll look at my data log and okay, well they came together and they locked up my, when I say they, I mean my drive shaft and, and or sorry, my input shaft and my RPM. When they're together, my clutch is no longer switching. Let's say that is, you know, maybe 8,000. Well at 8,000, I'm gonna have considerably no more total load. Instead of 800, I might have 16 or 1,700 pounds. Well then, 75% of that is coming from my counterweight. And so when I make a counterweight change, I don't just change the total weight, but I also make a base change to keep those percentages the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were talking earlier we a nice rule in the thumb for starting line pressure, counterweight plus base. space is right around your about what your power level is. Power level. Yeah, so a real good place to start if I've got an 800 horsepower engine, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 pounds of total force, that's base and counterweight, will get you going and give you some data to look at. It won't be perfect, but it'll get you going. And the number works with me, like my car is 1,500 horse, 4,000 pounds. I think I'm right around 1,500. Works out pretty good. Yeah, so works I don't, out pretty good, I don't quite it? know why that math works, but <laughs> it, it does. It does, so. yeah. And, and so, uh, normal street clutch, you might have a 25 to 300 pound clamping force. It doesn't change as you go down the track. How much pressure do you think this is putting on as you go through the tracks? Um, well, so I can I can kind of show you. It but, doesn't really. Um, let me see here if I have my. Yeah, here we go. Show you the little spreadsheet that I use here. Because the clutch feels really weak at the beginning, but yeah. when you go to push it in as you go through the traps. It's kind of like there's a little bit of extra force there. Yep. So here would be an example of a given clutch setup where I've got one and a half turns of base and I've got 20 grams of counterweight. So 5,500, I've got 789 pounds. 58% of that from the base, 41.7 from the counterweight. Now up here at 8,200 RPM, with the same base and the same counterweight, I've increased to 1,464, but now 68.5% of that is from counterweight. So if you want to say, well, I'm going through the traps, like in this car, maybe... 10,100 or something. Now you can see that, uh, hang on, I screwed something up there. Uh, uh, it doesn't go that high, that's the problem, yeah. Let's see, maybe I go to 9,000. Yeah, there we go. So if I went to 9,000 RPM, yeah. and I have 1660, and it'll just keep getting more clamping force as your RPMs are going up, which is fine. It's not ideal because that, that number is going up with RPM, and my engine power is going down, but there's no chance it's going to slip. Yeah, so. yeah. And even in my street car, the amount of counterweight that I have will have an effect even under 2000 RPM. Like at, seven, yeah, sure. at, at 1700 RPM when I'm cruising in six gear, if I don't have enough counterweight on, it'll go. It gives it a little flare, <laughs> yeah. a little buzz, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, hopefully that was interesting for you guys. And uh, we're gonna tune up our clutch a little better tomorrow than we did today. And I think we'll be okay. I, I'm pretty confident you'll be okay. <laughs> awesome, thanks, Ben. You're welcome, glad to have you. Yeah.